Can you believe that autosave is one of the most hated features of Office? Now I'm talking about this little toggle up here in the top right corner of Word, Excel and PowerPoint that instantly saves your work when you store your files in OneDrive or SharePoint. I'm pretty sure that you, like me, have forgotten to save a file at least once. You'd be working away on a spreadsheet for hours and as you're packed up, ready to quit for the day, you click on close and without even thinking, don't save and bam, all your work is gone. What a terrible way to work. And I know that from talking with many IT and help desk people over the years, that every single day around 4.30, calls start coming into the help desk with frantic staff asking for help to recover a file that they forgot to save. But then, without warning, in 2017, this new autosave feature popped up in Office 365 desktop apps that started automatically saving your work. Back in 2019, the following suggestion was one of the most voted for pieces of feedback on the Microsoft Office user voice website. Disable the new autosave by default as it can lead to loss of data. At the time, there were 2,800 votes championing this suggestion 397 comments, most of them salty, like these examples that I found on the first page. This is a horrible feature that should be disabled by default. This is the most pathetic feature that MS created. They're all about telling us what to do and how. Autosave is totally rubbish. MS, I think you've lost the plot on this one. The rage is real. And I think it's interesting because I think that autosaving was one of the most overdue and best features of Office 365. And I wanna talk about why I think it's the best feature first, and then I wanna address the problem. Firstly, think about what the save button actually is. The icon itself is actually one of these, a 3.5 inch floppy disk. Back in the day, one of these disks could hold about 1.44 megabytes. By today's standard, a very small amount of data. In fact, it was common enough that you'd be working on a file that was too big to fit on just one floppy disk. So you had to span the document across two or more disks. Now I'm oversimplifying of course, but the point is that the save button exists because it was simply not possible to constantly save work when Word and Excel were created. The computers that we had in the 80s and 90s just couldn't handle the job. And so we had to remember to always save our work. But in the late 90s, people stopped using floppy disks. And by the 2000s, computers actually came without them altogether. Hard drives and SSDs were now big enough that we didn't really need the save button anymore. And in fact, when OneNote arrived in 2003, it did away with the save button altogether. Word, Excel and PowerPoint on the other hand persisted with the floppy disk all the way until 2016. In 2017, this autosave icon appeared, at least once you'd saved your file into OneDrive or SharePoint. There is a little window of opportunity where you can still lose your work because if you start a new document, it won't autosave until you save it into OneDrive or SharePoint for the first time. And if you're still saving files on a network drive or some other storage service or location, well, you'll still need to use that floppy disk. In 2021, that just shouldn't be a thing anymore. So why the rage? Well, here's the problem. If you wanna make even the slightest change to people's day in, day out workflow, you're gonna to need to prepare them and hold their hand through the process. Remember that there are plenty of people in the workforce that have actually been using Word for 20 or 30 years. They have extremely well-worn ways of doing things. And change is jarring, uncomfortable and difficult. Let's take a look at another comment from the user voice site. Horrible feature, needs to be disabled by default. This has caused me to lose several important documents I was using as base files to create new documents. Now all I have are the new files with no way to restore a previous version. Now fortunately, this assumption is not correct. In fact, quite the opposite. Autosave in Office is accompanied by a brilliant feature called version history. And the two features work together to ensure that it's practically impossible for you to lose your data. And once you know how to use autosave and version history, never losing your work again is just the start. You can completely transform the way you work, making it far more efficient and collaborative. So let's take a look at how you can achieve this. First, save your work into OneDrive or SharePoint. Go to File, then Save. Choose OneDrive as a location. Name your file and click Save. Notice that the autosave icon is now in the on position. You can turn this off, but why would you? It's like disabling the brakes on your car. Make some changes, they're saved, don't worry. But here's where it gets tricky and where the problems start. 
What if you didn't want to make those changes? That last comment described one of the most common scenarios where autosave causes angst, templates. So let's say you have a document that you've got set up as a template just the way you like it. And you're in the habit of opening that document and changing all of the details and then saving it under a new name, for example, your client name. That's gonna be a problem with automatic save because the moment you change the details on this document, the file has been saved and you've overwritten the template. So that template scenario is going to require you to change your habits very slightly. Instead of opening the file and making changes and then saving it, you'll now open the file and immediately save it with the new name, then make your changes. Problem solved, not so fast. It's inevitable that you're gonna to forget to do this. So what do you do when you've overwritten your template? In that case, immediately go to file and save as, save it under the new file name. Close that file down and open up your template again. You'll see it has the new details still in it, automatically saved. So how do we go about reverting back to the way it was? At the top of the document, you'll see the file name in the title bar of the application. And you'll notice that this is now a drop down. And if you drop it down, you're going to see a link to version history. OneDrive and SharePoint automatically capture up to 100 copies of our document whenever autosave is enabled. So even on a relatively new document, you should see at least a couple of versions in this version history list. Click on one of the versions to open it, take a look at it. It's most likely that the version that you're after is the first in the list behind the current document. When you find the document looking just like you want it to be, then click on restore and this version of the document will become the current version. What was the current version simply moves down the list. You can see that in conjunction with automatic saving, version history could really change the way you work. For example, I used to save copies of large and important files that I was working on under different version names. I might put V1, V2, V3 on the end of the file name, or I might put the date in a year, month, day format at the start of the file name so that it sorts nicely. I used to have a colleague who put the word new in the file every time he updated it. So I'd often find files with new, new, new in the file name. No matter what your filing system is, it's quite possible that you don't need it anymore. You can simply work on the file knowing that there are up to 100 copies of that file kept under version history at different points in time. Hopefully by now you get the idea that this most hated feature of Office 365 is actually one of the best. If one person a week loses one hour of work because they forgot to save a file, then 10 days every year are wasted. Imagine how widespread this issue is in your organization. It's likely that far more than 10 days are lost every year because of this floppy disk. Automatic saving was way overdue in 2017. And I think this highlights a very big challenge that we have in the modern workplace, and that is understanding and dealing with change. Small feature changes like automatic saving break workflows and create issues for people on a wide scale. However, once those changes are addressed, and it doesn't take much to address them, just a little bit of a heads up and some training, the time savings can be massive. In this era, when things change so fast, that training is more important than ever. We aim to provide as much of it as we can here for free. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell and check out our channel. And if you're involved in delivering IT for your organization, then get in touch with us using the link below and talk to us about how training could help your people. And I'll leave you with this quote that Microsoft's president, Brad Smith, shared on IMF's The Exchange. Quote, roll the quote. Between 1980 and the year 2000, employers overall increased their investments in employee training. But interestingly, in about the year 2000, that changed. And I think employers just assumed that you were hired and you knew these things, or you would somehow figure it out on your own. For 20 years, we have seen employer investments in training first fall for a decade, and then be stagnant for a decade. We need to reverse this.